everyone to another inventright.com TV show. Make sure to check out inventright.com, click on coaching, learn more about how Steve, myself, or coaches have been successfully coaching and mentoring inventors to license their products for the last almost 16 years. Today we have a very special guest that we're going to have on more and more, patent attorney Damon Kelly. Hi, Damon. thanks. Thanks for having me on. Oh, and hi to you too, Stephen, our co-founder. Hey, Steve. You're, uh, you know, Damon, he's a patent attorney. Everybody wants to talk to the patent attorney, well, right? Well, I don't know if everybody does, <laughs> Sorry. but... Uh, but, but well, but, they want free advice from that. That's where he is. <laughs> the whole trick is, but when you need, if you need one, you need to know how to work with one. That's what's really important here, and that's mm. what we want to talk about today. Is that when you start, when you realize that, hey, I need to work with a patent attorney. We're not, we're not going to talk about how to find one on this particular uh, YouTube, but we're going to talk about, hey, what do you need to do to give them the right information, the right packet. For, that, for your patent attorney to do a great job. Because sometimes we put so much faith in our, our patent attorney and we expect them to do the homework that we should be doing. They're only as good as the information we provide. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about that. Damon, am I right about that? You are absolutely right, Stephen. I mean, you would be shocked how many times somebody sends me a one sentence blurb, sentence blurb on their invention and says and say go for it and it's like well wh where do we begin um, the the principal tool for the patent attorney is what's known as an invention disclosure and that's where you spend a couple of hours talking to your patent attorney about your invention and the question always arises you know they what do i bring to this to this meeting how can i make this meeting most efficient and there's three or four things you need to bring to this meeting. One, you need to bring a prototype if you have one. There's nothing like holding the thing in your hand and playing with it so that the, you, you know, a patent attorney can see it, feel it, touch it, ask questions about it. That's critical. The second thing that's critical, I believe, is to either have a write-up of some sort or your provisional patent application with you if you are, have gone down that road. And it's, it's critical for two reasons. One is that it gives the attorney a way to see what you see. So you write your story and then the patent attorney can say, well, hey, that, I get how you're looking at this. And why that's important is because the patent attorney does not see things the same way you do. As an inventor, you see things in one way. As a, for patenting, it's a completely different way. So having that write-up is, is critical. The third thing you've got to have is some drawings. It just sketches of how it works, using it, however you need to do that, get some drawings, because most guys can take a look at a drawing and, and understand what's going on. So if you come with those three things to a meeting, you're way, way ahead of the pack. Okay, Damon, I got a question for you though. Sure. How, how important it is for an inventor to do some prior art searching, to know about some of the other things that could be similar, is that helpful to you? Well, it is, but it's probably not helpful to me for the reasons that most people think it is. It's not helpful to me to define your invention better or whatever. That it's, it's, it's helpful to me to know how you're thinking about your invention, and it's helpful to the inventor to say, oh, this guy already invented this, why am I doing this? Let me start thinking about improvements. Now, having said that, I've had people hand me 25, 30 references and say, here's my prior art search, tell me what's going on. And what you don't realize is each one of those patents is gonna take an hour or two for me to analyze and figure out, and that translates into costs. So when you come with a prior art search to a patent attorney, man, one or two or three references at most, and only the relevant drawing from that patent is probably what you need to do. We can talk about other reasons for prior art, that's, but if we're just talking about that introduction, that's what we need to have. That's so, thank you. That's such good information. <laughs> Andrew, you know and I know that we, we teach inventors um, how to license ideas. And the, one of our first step, we call study the marketplace, and we talk about um, doing a Google image search. But why is that important? Yeah. Well, you know, a prior art search isn't just things that have been patented, it's things that have been sold in the marketplace. And Google Images is the greatest way to very quickly and visually find, if you have a barbecue spatula with a bottle opener, what other barbecue spatulas with bottle openers are out there, and really study the micro category and understand all the products in that space, the price points, the upsides, the downsides of the projects. Maybe you go on Amazon in addition, you look at what people are complaining about certain projects. And like Damon said, to think about all the improvements and workarounds and variations, 
you need to understand that space that your invention is in so you can give okay. better information to your attorney about what those improvements and variations are. You can't just give one version to your attorney. You need to go, oh, well, here's some other ways it can be done too so they can include that. Just like Steven said earlier, your attorney is only as good as the information that they, oh, they perfect. give you. you guys. So basically what we're saying here to wrap it up, you have to be the expert. You have to do your homework. You have to study the marketplace. You have to know what similar products are out there. You have to do some prior art searching so you know what has been invented and how close it is to yours so you know your point of difference. So when you put that together with your provisional patent application, you put that together with your prototype, and then even your sales sheet, show the big benefit to your patent attorney, put it all together so he knows what you're trying to protect. That way he can do a good job. Dave, and one last thing. Should someone just send you all this stuff? Hey, I'm an inventor, here's all my stuff. How should they go about working with the patent attorney? How do you put a big X on the screen when you ask that question? <laughs> no, don't send me anything. Call me first. I'm happy to talk to uh, any invent rights student that's out there. Give me a call. We'll chat about what you've got until I'm familiar with you and we know where you're at and whether you even need my services. But please don't send me your information in the mail. And let me just say that invent rights students are far and above the best clients I ever have. They always come prepared. They know what they're doing because Stephen and Andrew have taught you guys how to look at the context, look at the landscape, and understand where you fit in. That is so valuable to me as a patent attorney. It makes my job a lot easier, and it saves you money. Perfect. Damon, Andrew, thank you very much. Andrew, you want to close this out? Good class. Damon, thank you so much. The rock and roll patent attorney, that's what we're going to call Damon. <laughs> Really, really cool. Inventor friendly. Thank you so much, Damon. Um, we just get, remind everybody to take care and keep inventing. And don't forget to check out our website, inventright.com. Click on coaching. Page through there. Some videos of Steve and I talking about the program and, and how it works. Check it out. And we'll see, catch up with you next time. See you, everybody. Bye bye.